make the best use of our time, I will not introduce all of you. I will introduce you in the first question, okay? But we have seven people from seven different companies that will help us to understand how can technology uh, help business to uh, take advantage uh, in, in these difficult times that we are living. Let me begin with uh, Laurado Marcos. He works for, for, for Fujitsu. It's uh, quite obvious that we are living very difficult times. We are living thought times that uh, even sometimes difficult to understand the things we are, we, are, we are doing, we are living, we are participating in. Laura, uh, from Fujitsu, from yourself, what's your opinion on how can technology help us in managing this complexity, managing this changing environment that we are living in? But I think Laura, I think you have, you, you should open you should open the, the, the microphone. No, my wonderful produ production team is telling me that there's some problem with the with the microphone. Now it's now it's uh, working. Let's go, Laura. No. No, we don't. We don't hear you. No, pass up. Well, we'll we, we go back to you. We we'll go back to you because there's some, some problem with the sound. Uh, I I'll ask a, a quite similar question to Jing Weber. He he works for Neo4j. I don't know if I pronounced the, the, the name of your company quite well. Uh, hi Jim, how you doing? Hello. I mean, I guess in. Uh, at, at least your microphone is open, so you, you, you are beginning well. Uh, you do Jim, hear me? <laughs> Jim, yeah, yeah, I hear you, I hear you. Jim, okay, could, you, could, could, you, could, you, could you explain us how, in your, in your opinion, is technology helping us, helping our companies, helping our business, helping our economy to manage well, well, I, I this, complexity, we this complex uh, environment we are living in? I would say that we had, uh, in one case, perfected video conferencing, but it's clear that with Laura's situation, technology is failing us terribly <laughs> in being able to even communicate uh, over these distances. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, so I think there's, there's, in my mind, over the last year or so, in this kind of terrible year that we've had, I've seen kind of two emergence streams. Uh, one, you know, represented by the likes of Google and the big, the big web companies who've been able to capitalize on existing incredible investments in technology and incredible technology leadership positions to consolidate their own businesses. Uh, yeah, we, we've seen the, the likes of uh, Amazon and Google and so on just absolutely cruising through this last year as if, as if, as if it's not happening, uh, despite the fact they themselves would no doubt have had tremendous business disruption. They just seem to sail through it. And then we have the rest of the kind of normal businesses. And what I see there is a kind of huge dash for digital. Um, in those businesses that are, you know, regular brick and mortar retailers with web presence and so on, those uh, those healthcare systems that, that are trying to keep us safe through this pandemic, they've had this huge dash for digital where they're trying to kind of mimic some of the practices that the large web properties have done, both in terms of data and what they're using their data for, uh, so that they can perhaps become more robust in the face of these very uh, unprecedented uh, challenging circumstances. So the, those are the kind of streams that I see in the larger companies. For, for smaller companies like me, I work for you know, Neo4j or Neo Catra Yotta, as, I, as we seem to be known in, in Spain. Uh, yeah, as a small company, a small technology company, we've seen our fortunes fare reasonably well, but mostly propelled, I think, by this dash for digital. As, bu as businesses have had to upskill because of the pandemic and the related economic consequences, we've seen people look for innovative digital tools to bring to bear quickly so they can try and shore up uh, their defenses against rather a hostile business environment. So I, I don't know if Alicia, I called you louder, so it's maybe this is their problem that the, that the microphone did, didn't didn't work because I I didn't use your name properly. Alicia, how are you doing? It's your it's your <laughs> microphone working now. <laughs> now now now, uh, we, tell, now you we tell me. You. Now we can hear you. Now now we can yeah? hear you. Yeah yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Alicia, in your yeah, in your maybe opinion. that was the problem. My name yeah, is Alicia. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. Too many, too many guests. Too many guests. That are, I, I, and of course, my memory is not that good any longer. But I'll do my best. I do my best. So sorry, Alicia. <laughs> Alicia, tell us, tell us, in your opinion, in Fujitsu's opinion, how can, can technology help us, help our business, uh, help help companies 
to manage this complexity or this, uh, uh, let's say, strange uh, times we are living in? Oh, well, certainly everyone knows that the economy is becoming more digital and eventually people needed to work in different ways and consumers were going to buy in different ways. But the problem is that suddenly we have this window where just is happening everything very quickly and it's more appearing and still unclear how much things are going to return to the way they are or up that and pivot to something new. Most of the industries were uh, digitizing products before the pandemic, digitizing written material, documentation, music, videos, but uh, most of the digital people were kind of in marketing, right? The core operation weren't really being taught. Uh, there was no digital adoption within the core operations. And we think that coronavirus crisis is just accelerating this, the core operation digital transformation. I mean, the digital moving into business models. So what we are what we got now is digital enabled businesses that are doing things and performing better less expensively and faster and we also seeing now how as digital moves into business models you got the c-level attention so in my opinion in Fujitsu's opinion when you think about what life is going to be after the coronavirus i don't think we are going back it is certainly not going to be in retreat and we are not going to do things like the old way analog way having said that contrary to popular belief digital transformation we believe is less about technology and more about people so in our opinion companies will not confront technology's problems but a growing talent problem one that has the potential to become a strategic bottleneck in this horizon you ask us about so i think we all agree that this uh, virus an, an, an analogic virus has accelerated this uh, digital transformation of our companies, of course, but of our lives too. I, I, I'd like to, to ask uh, Jose Ruiz from, from Paradigma your opinion on this. Paradigma has been working in, in, in data, has been working in digital transformation, but, but from this uh, more data approach uh, you, you have, I, I'd like to know your opinion, how the, the tools you have been using in the last years can help companies to understand things that are going on uh, in this uh, complex environment. Okay, so thank you, Jaime. So here at, at Paradigma, for 15 years, we have helped those clients that are many of the, the most important companies here in Spain to be able to compete in, in a whole new world, in a world in which uh, digital giants uh, in a very short time have aggressively competed with, with every company in every kind of sector. So for us, taking advantage of, of technology is nothing new. It's, it's a matter of survival for our clients. And this was true even before the pandemic, but, but this is even more obvious now. So we plan on keeping helping our clients to boost their digital transformation plans. And, and we want also to help them being more agile in their decision making processes because they can no longer rely on past experiences because the, the global context is changely, changing very rapidly and they have to be very quick testing new ideas, new products, shifting tactics according to results because the, the world is different. And, and we are also very excited, in fact, about the, the dramatic push that this crisis, this crisis has done over the possibility to work in remote. That is something that has already, uh, already commented. Right now, it's no longer a possibility, it's, it's a fact and in Paradigma, we have been pushing remote work for years, but to be honest, it was not easy to, to have this accepted by our clients. And during these months, we have been able to prove to them that we can work as effectively in full remote model as, as in person. So this opens the doors in, in order to bring to our teams the, the best professionals, not only in Madrid, but in Spain and even in the world. And it also helps our clients those who are not physically near. So we are so excited, uh, excited about how good this is going that we feel sure that, that the on-premise work will be something that will be a thing of the past, even after the pandemic. And this is a great thing for us and, and for our clients. So this, for example, is a great example of a crisis turning to an opportunity for our clients. I think, I think it, it's clear that technology is playing a role in, in, the, in this uh, crisis, in this moment we are, we are living, but I think it's, it's, it's interesting trying to understand the role it will play in this uh, new normal, in this uh, perhaps better normal that we want to wanna build. Ignacio Cabrera works in, IBA, in IBM. Uh, I would like to know, in, in your opinion, Ignacio, uh, which is the role that the technology will play 
not only now, but in this new normal, better normal, this future after coronavirus. But what do you think? Which is a role that uh, tech is playing in this uh, after virus world? Well, if we are speaking about uh, now, one thing important to say... Oh, because I, think, the... I think we have a problem with your microphone. It's open now, so I will try ah, okay. to... No, no, yeah, it's perfect now, yeah. Okay, okay, let me... I can hear you, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. So, uh, if we are speaking about uh, now, one thing important to say is that uh, customers need value from the technology they have today. And uh, it's important for IBM to provide this value in this environment of uh, multi-cloud, multi-provider, even hybrid cloud, if we consider uh, private clouds that are in place in, in customer nowadays. So, uh, IBM strategy around hybrid cloud and providing our data and AI capabilities anywhere is key to help customers obtain value from their technology ecosystem as is, without asking them to change everything overnight. Having said that, uh, it's important to say also that uh, the digital transformation journey uh, my peers said uh, the same. Uh, it has been advancing for some years now, and this crisis has just dramatically accelerated it. Companies advanced in their digitalization and automation of processes and customer engagement already had an advantage over companies still not in this journey. So this advantage has increased during this context, but uh, once the situation returns back to normal, the differentiation, the differentiation provided from the digital transformation will remain. There's no coming back once you've uh, successfully modernized your company, because this will be one of the key competitive advantages you will have. Ignacio. Guy, how you doing? Guy Colon is the CTO of Incubation in Red Labs. How you doing, Guy? Guy, can, uh, do you have the, the, the microphone open? Could you open it? Yeah. I'm hoping. It's ah, working. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we can hear you now. We can hear you now. We can hear you now. It's 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 amazing because the farther you are, the better sound you have. So it's uh, it's an amazing thing in this uh, tech world that we are that we are living. Guy, uh, quite similar the question. In in your opinion, and and uh, how you see this uh, role that technology will play not only in managing this complexity now, but in building this new future, this new normal, this uh, after virus world that we want to make. And in your opinion, how is uh, technology evolving with this situation we are living from this uh, giving answers to the crisis to these uh, new opportunities after the, the virus? So um, what we see is that the process will just enhance. Like uh, people uh, expect, like um, expect it to happen in, in the Corona time, right? But um, we see that even after the Corona time, it will just enhance itself. Like uh, there is no turning back. Like the digital transformation is there, and AI is all over, and everyone are now expecting um, to get better experience, personalized experience, um, instance experience. Everything has to be faster and and uh, you know and, and instant. Like um, we see it in, in BI, right? People uh, used to get in their business because they were used to run it locally or they used to manage it by their own. Um, I don't know, nightly, nightly processes. And now they're expecting to get inputs or, or, or you know, predictions in a minute. They click a button, they want to see what happens. They want to predict. Even in the most obvious place, like um, that is related to Corona, right? Uh, the hospitals despite the fact that everyone were talking about healthcare before, once the corona hit uh, this, these hospitals, everything enhanced. Like, And now they expect to get these numbers, which they used to get like in days or, 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 or even in months, they expect to get them in real time. Everything became more instant. So, And, and with that, the only way they can achieve it is by moving most of their business to the cloud, even, even traditional markets like banking or, or security, you see that they're moving to the cloud and trying to reduce their latency and giving more instance experience to everything. Um, so we expect it to like, just continue. That there is no turning back. Nobody will go back to uh, something slower. Nobody will go will accept anymore um, waiting for hours for results. They all expect to get everything now in real time as they used to get in this strange timing of corona when they're doing everything from home 
but because they are doing everything from home, they had to get everything digitally and everything had to be renewed. So everything like enhanced and, and they all experience change and they would expect to get it from now on into the future. Right. Thank you. Pablo, Pablo Carlier works in Google. Google has been present in the first presentation because Paco Nathan talked about Google. Jim, in the introduction five minutes ago, uh, ago talked about Google. So everybody's talking about Google. Now it's time that, that, that for Google to talk. So uh, share with us your, your vision, not only in the answer that technology is given now, but in this vision of how c c could be the world after this uh, situation we are, we are going through. I think your, your, your sound is working. Pablo? Uh, we don't have the sound. It's, your, your, your microphone is open because we, can, we can't hear you. Okay, okay, okay. The, the production team is telling that Okay, we'll be back. We'll be back to the to the connection. You know, real time stuff. Real time stuff. <laughs> so, so let's go to our last guest. But uh, last but not least, from the Nodo, Jaume Brunet. Jaume, how are you doing? Fine, thanks. I hope uh, that you can hear me. <laughs> yes, yes. You, you, your sound is very, very good. Where are you? Are you here in Madrid or? No, I'm in the Costa Brava. I'm in front of the sea oh, in Blanes. Much, much, much better, much better because because the Nodo is a, is a company from from Galicia. I, lo I love Galicia. Yes. So it's a, so it's a wonderful yeah. place. But you are Galicia is great. Costa Brava is not bad. But yeah. So, so it's uh, <laughs> so you, you are in an in an amazing place. So tell us from from there mm -hmm. in Costa Brava, uh, some uh, specific examples how the Nodo, how your company, how you are working with customers in this. Uh, terrific times to uh, yeah. take advantage, to make uh, value with the, the, the with technology. Yeah, for, from the procedural point of view, I, I have to agree with some of my, my colleagues previously has uh, shared it with us. Uh, but just, just commenting a point that I think that it is interesting. Most of the tools that we already uh, been using during this pandemic with this uh, remote uh, place of work and this remote connection to the sites to, to develop our job. Most of the tools we are already using with customers already exist before the pandemic. It is just a, a point of decision and go ahead uh, and turn the, the, the need into, into uh, something that we can use. So we decided to use it because we have no option, uh, but most of the tools we already had. So uh, having said that, what is important is, is to put on the hands of the, our customers the technology enough to develop what they need to do. For example, in, in, uh, in the Nodo, what we have been done uh, from the sales perspective is executing, like my colleague from Paradigma has uh, just commented, everything in remote, and we are able to do it with the, the tools we, we already use. Uh, from the approach uh, in the commercial side, let me say from the Nodo, what we agree with most of the customers is just to reduce the impact they have been uh, uh, suffering from the pandemic. Uh, the Nodo provides our customers about agility, and this is one of the most needed uh, features. So the possibility to go multi-cloud and to connect multi-cloud accessing a single point, or the possibility to create uh, a feature store uh, in a virtual way, uh, connecting uh, several uh, data repositories to execute artificial intelligence algorithms or, or deep learning algorithms or any other uh, kind of analytics. So, uh, what we try to provide to our customers is uh, just focusing on what we need and trying to uh, help the, the 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 companies to execute in a proper way. Most of the tools we already has been using and already are in our in our hands, and we just need the force and the opportunity and the project to execute. So this this is what we have been done in the last eight months of the pandemic. I think. Pablo sounds is now a little bit better. Pablo, can we can, can you hear? Hopefully. Okay. Is it okay that's, now? That's, that's great. That's great. So your your, your awesome. turn from, from from the Google perspective, from your perspective, how is technology helping to respond and how will help to build the next? So uh, 
I've heard many messages that, from Alicia, from Jose, from Jaume that, that actually resonate very much to what we're experiencing at Google right now because it's a, it's a very, very weird environment. Everyone is pivoting into uncharted territory with this crisis. No one is prepared for this world. And user priorities have been shifting for the past months. And uh, last year's playbook is no longer good. So every organization is trying to reshape their strategy as we go. Now, the ability to scale up or down some investments to realign the resources that everyone has in their organizations, to understand what are the new needs of their users or customers. They're gonna be super important. And that's where we believe that's where the critical role of technology lies in understanding that context of what the end user needs, what our processes need, how can we rebalance the priorities of what we had learned for the past 20 years, and now we need to shift in 20 weeks into a new world, how can we bring here some new superpowers that can allow these organizations to align to this new reality? And we believe that technology has a way to be built more helpful through data. So in a way, there's the ability to provide intelligence from data that's gonna be very helpful to create these new experiences that gonna, that's gonna help these companies remain relevant for their users. Alicia said it very well, like digital marketing has been leading this technology transition, but what about IT? What about OT? We think that through more useful and assistive technology, both for the internal users in companies and also for their users, for their front end and for their back office, we think that we are gonna be able to provide these new experiences that are gonna help these customers. Now, uh, th these technologies need to minimize overhead. They need to maximize the resources that we have. They need to help us do more with less and also do more with less from home, which is actually a, a, like a triple challenge, right? We, have, we are serving like 30 times more video than we were used to in video conferences in January. We have over 3 billion minutes of video conferences every day serving from Google right now. So we know that traditional customer experience channels are under very much stress. There are solutions that can help companies right now uh, understand their context of their users, understand how to map that with their internal processes and how they used to work and provide a better way of engaging with customers, with citizens in the case of administrations, with their end users and with other companies to partner to create these new solutions, these new uh, technologies and also these new business processes and models that probably we have not discovered yet, that what we will be discovering in the near future, how to manage with this new situation. The key is to provide the organizations with the right agility to take decisions quickly and to orient those resources to be able to be first in market. So, so thanks. You were commenting, so the, the, the user behavior has changed dramatically. You are serving much more video than ever. I think most of the companies are, are feeling these this, uh, changes. But the, the thing is that companies that were prepared, that have invested in, in, in technology, are now much more uh, in front of the rest. So your, the, the return on investment of the, of the technology has been like enormous. Ignacio, uh, from, from, from your experience in, in IBM, uh, do you think that the, the users, that the companies have this feeling that this moment has given reason to that, those companies that had invested previously in, in technology? Is, is this uh, a change in mindset uh, that, that gives the reason to these people that invested in the right moment? Yeah, as I mentioned uh, in my previous question, I think a digital transformation is a journey. So this provides uh, a clear advantage in terms of uh, normality, but uh, the advantages turn dramatic in a crisis context due to the extra constraint on resources and the spatial limitation in our customer interactions. All companies already prepared to establish a digital rich relation with their customers and with internal clear and digital processes have a huge advantage over companies that are forced to run that transformation within weeks in a context of crisis. Those companies being betting for digital transformation and technology in the past have at the same time been involved in a cultural change. More flexible organizations, teams with different and rich skill sets, uh, information shared across the whole company. The cultural changes in companies are slow. So all, orga all organizations with this new culture already established will surely, surely adapt uh, much better to any changes. Also, these companies have not on only invested in technology, AI, analytics, but also in new skills, which was uh, mentioned before. Now those skills are more needed than ever and will be more difficult to get uh, with the increased demand over them. 
But the skills will need uh, of a technology base to, to get, the, get the most of their, their value, which is uh, what we are aiming to provide in IBM. An important message for all of you, please open your microphones, okay? The, the production team will, will, will close it if necessary, but keep your, your microphones open. I, I, I'm watching, there's like two of you that have closed the, 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 the microphone. I, I go to, 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 back to, to Paradigma because you have been explaining us uh, previously, you know, your, your experience, the, the company has been for more than 10 years working with, with customers. Do you think that these customers have this feeling that, they, that the, the investment they made in technology have prepared better for this situation we are, we are living in? Uh, do you think that this will change the mindset that will be easier investing in technology, combining the, 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 the business people, the financial people that in, investing in, in technology has a, has a return? I'm sure, I'm sure. And, and I think that most of, of the companies that didn't believe in, in technology have had a, a reality shock. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that COVID has hit hardest the companies that, that rely on pure physical business models. We see, for example, in the textile industry sector, how companies like Primark with no e-commerce, no investment uh, uh, almost in technology are struggling, whereas others like Inditex in the same sector are riding the wave much better. Of course, they have an impact, but, but uh, they are better prepared. Why? Because technology helps companies in this crisis context a lot in, in multiple ways. Uh, the main one, of course, is, is the ability to shift from physical business to digital business with, with everything that that implies, which is not only the ability to, to sell, to, to reach the end customer, but also to move all back office processes that are really the base of, of the iceberg uh, that also need to be efficiently run from a digital context. And we are not talking uh, only about physical things, but about, about time things. And this is something that, that was discussed before. Processes that, that can afford to take weeks before being digital have now to, to be run in seconds or minutes. And this is one of the most important challenges that we are seeing. Also, technology helps them uh, to, to run their companies in a full remote model. This is something that has also been discussed and it's very, very helpful in this situation. And it also helps them to make them to make good decisions because the COVID has brought uncertainty. There, there are a lot of things that cannot be run as they were before because the supply chain has changed, the workforce has changed, the economic situation has changed. So we, we do not rely anymore in empiric models, but in data, in artificial intelligence. So companies that, that shift to AI in day-to-day -day management and operation decision making will have a competitive uh, edge against that who don't. So in summary, I think that one of the effects of the current crisis is that most companies are learning fast that technology and digital transformation are key for their survival. And many of them are dramatically accelerating these digital transformation plans. The challenge is how to accelerate fast, but without having an accident, so to speak, that get them out of the race, because most of them start from, from a pretty hard scenario, from an operational status in which the ecosystem is so heavy that changing it from one day to another is impossible, even from one year to another. So we will talk, uh, in fact, in next Wednesday in our talk about real-time digital platforms and how we can address this challenge, which is it's huge. I think, I think this is an interesting message that we are, we are going faster than ever and we now uh, we need to learn how, how to deal with this uh, velocity that many times is not, is not that easy. Uh, Alicia, going back to you, because you, you were introducing uh, this, this, the, the role that technology was playing uh, previously, you were talking about uh, digitalization, about digital transformation, about, about people and about culture, but I'd like to know how this uh, culture should change for this new normality, because because probably digital transformation will not ever be the same thing. Now it's a different thing. Uh, which is the role that you think that digital transformation, that technology, will play in this uh, new world we are trying to build? Well, it's more or less what I told you before. You know, it's not just about technology; it's also about talent and. Uh, uh, what is true is the industries that have invested the most in in this digitization are not only the the ones that are better facing this this crisis, but also the ones that are more strength uh, the ones that more strength will emerge from this crisis. 
uh, we are sure that many sectors will be transformed, but others will disappear and technology and talent uh, will play a principal role in, in every industry that survives. What do we have to do to ensure that we exist tomorrow is a fundamental question that is bringing the issue of operational transformation to the top of the board's agenda of every company of all sizes and sectors. And uh, in my opinion, the the acceleration of the cooperation, the data transformation is being the common effect in, in all industries and regions. Okay, the, 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 the event is more or less focused. the same speed. Yeah. Than yeah. 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 The event is focused uh, not, not in digital, but in artificial intelligence. So I, I like to know, uh, I like to, to focus this last part of the, of the panel in this, uh, in this kind of technologies, in this kind of projects, in this kind of initiatives. So, so Pablo, uh, could you share with us some specific projects, some specific things that are going on in this artificial intelligence arena that make sense in this environment we are living? Sure, sure. Um, I was talking before about the fact that we think that this uh, transition to technology must be more assistive. And uh, for that, we think that the, the role that data analysis, especially AI, is going to play is going to be very, very important. Because it's going to first enable companies to simplify that data and extract insights from it and empower data scientists to do more, to do more with less, but also uh, better serve uh, traditional users from the companies that are not necessarily specialists. You know what? Uh, for example, we were talking about how the interaction with users is changing. Now, contact center assisted technologies are going to transform the way that we engage with the companies we work with or the companies that serve us every day. That's going to transform the interfaces that we use for this omnicanality that we are having, the approach to customer care. And chatbots and artificial intelligence are powering these interactions more and more. Whilst in the back end, some of these digital processes that some industries are having to, to rush through right now are going to be assisted by things like document understanding and document AI. We are building very much uh, vertical tailored solutions to healthcare, to banking, FSI, to understand how to accelerate those processes internally by understanding documents, extracting information from that corpus of that, that domain knowledge for those verticals, and now applying it to simple to use tools that can be leveraged as, um, as other people have said, with the technology you have right now, but plugging in these new capabilities to that technology to enhance the way you're working. And now there are some other technologies that are related to AI, like AutoML, for example, that will allow non-technical users to amplify what they are building inside their organizations with machine learning. And this is the ability to create models out of the blue with a couple of clicks. If you have the data that's relevant to your problem, to your domain, and you need machine learning to help you do better decision making. Technologies like AutoML, powered with specific technology, like our tensor processing units, which is specialized circuits designed to make it cheaper and faster to run these models, can basically allow you to take your data, click two or three times, and then get a model trained on your data, leveraging the bleeding edge technology from a company like Google, to assist on solving your problem. This is going to democratize tremendously the access to these tools. And as Alicia was saying, this is exactly what we're needing because we need to transform the culture of organizations. And this new, new reality and new normality is going to demand autonomous decision making from every unit in the companies. Now, those more familiar with their domain and with their problems will now have autonomy to use technology applied to their data and their problem and be faster to market with solutions that will help them align better their strategy to the challenges they're facing right now. So sure, thank you. Yeah. Jim, in, in now for you, you, you are working in, in, in several aspects to, 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 could, could you share sure. with us some of these specific cases? So I mean, I look, I'm, I'm thrilled by the idea of, of graphs and machine learning. If I look at the stuff that the kind of leading edge stuff out of Google, for example, a really good example, the kind of merge of, of graphs and learning, I think is technically very, very interesting. Uh, not, not just the kind of uh, neural network stuff, but uh, things like graph embeddings to create you know, rich models that you're going to feed into the tensor processing pipeline and so on. And actually, at some level, I'm really confident that the technical the technology companies can, can do amazing things with, with data. Uh, with hardware and with clever software. Um, what I'm more interested in and perhaps slightly concerned about is that we it feels like AI is a, is a gold rush moment. We have a, a whole bunch of people you know, 
piling into this field who are perhaps new to the field and they are enabled that you know democratization was the word we used but we're, we're able to get our hands on some very sophisticated technology without really understanding it now the ibm intro we saw talked a little bit about provenance uh, knowing uh, why or uh, why a model has made a particular decision but that's often a very uh, far cry from the user experience knowing why my welfare payments have been stopped as a poor user in a you know phoning a call center knowing why a diagnosis has been changed because some model created some function that doesn't fit me all of these things are actually bigger challenges i think to get ai accepted by by the vast majority of the population i think this community the people listening the people on the panel we're actually in quite a small bubble of people who slightly understand the technology understand its benefits and its limitations i think there's a real danger that we'll have we'll be in a kind of wild west of data and algorithms whereby whereby we deploy this stuff and it causes active harm because it's immature when it's deployed to end users so i think i'd like to see uh, the phenomenal uh, outpouring of good technology that's happening, but I'd also quite like to see that tempered with some ethics and some understanding so that we know that this stuff is being used for the public good. And it isn't, for example, being used for nefarious purposes or indeed uh, uh, being used accidentally for malignant purposes. I think that's a greater challenge for us because as technologists, we can see the potential in being able to do this kind of processing. But I think sometimes we need to stop and think, how do we do this without harm? And perhaps like the medics have, we need some kind of uh, guiding principle to help us decide that. Yeah, we'll talk a lot tomorrow about ethics. We have a panel about ethics uh, tomorrow. But uh, before, let's continue with the, with the bubble <laughs> that Jim was telling. Uh, Guy, in, in, your, in your experience in, in, in Redis Labs, uh, talk, talk, uh, share with us, uh, tell us, the, 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 this is specific cases, this is specific uh, customer stories you are working in uh, using artificial intelligence for, for giving uh, business answers to the situation we are living. Um, yeah, as, as mentioned before, like um, AI is all over, like everyone wants to deploy AI now, right? Everyone wants to uh, incorporate AI in their solutions. Um, and I think what this pandemic uh, brought to the table uh, or, or forced everyone to do at least is, is to move online, right? And, and the first um, industry that had to completely move online was the e-commerce. It was already there, but we still saw a lot of brick and mortar store, right? And many, even big chain tried to avoid it or, or put it as a, as a side business. But now that everyone are moving online and, and that's becoming their main business, so they need to provide similar experience or, or good experience as they used to provide, like personalized experience as they used to provide in their physical store. So obviously you see personalization everywhere. Everyone to do personalization, everyone to do recommendation, everyone to do to try to make the online experience more personalized and, and give better uh, adapted experience, something that maybe only the big e-commerce used to do before, like, like Amazon or, or Alibaba. And now everyone needs to do it, even the small ones. So they need, as, as the guy from, as, as Google mentioned, like the, you need to democratize it. So everyone needs to be able to do it. Everyone needs to be able to incorporate in their e-commerce solution a personalized experience. Um, but once you are doing online and your most of your business is online, so most of your customer service is now online. So you need, again, to provide top-notch customer service uh, with chatbot and stuff like that. So you, again, you need to incorporate AI. It needs to be an instance experience. You need to be top level, you cannot provide something that is not at the level that the big guys are providing. And and last, once, even if you are a single store that moves to the online, you need to provide uh, an, an efficient business. Otherwise, this all moved, this all digital, digital experience, the digital transformation will not be efficient for you. You'll lose money. And you see many businesses that have been forced to quickly move online are losing money. So they need to improve their business, they need to improve their logistics. And without incorporating AI and BI and, and predictability to their logistics, they're not going to make money. So I, I guess that this is the, um, uh, the most common use case that we see today. So thank you. We will finish in Costa Brava because I can't find any better place to finish. Show, show Yama, <laughs> tell us. 
tell us your, your, your experience in, in the Nodo with a specific example, the, the things that you are working with your customers for, for giving yeah. business answers to this situation. Yeah, uh, the first uh, uh, a bit comment about uh, why my colleagues has appointed from uh, Google to uh, uh, the rest of the of the panelists. Uh, artificial intelligence or deep learning is all about data. There, there are nothing to do without data. So uh, what we have to provide is to the ones that are able to deploy those algorithms, those training models, or uh, uh, capabilities to uh, uh, deploy these technologies is the proper access to data. We cannot lose, uh, let me say, 50% of our time preparing the data instead of working on the proper algorithms to develop the, the artificial intelligence or the deep learning or, or any uh, technology on top of the, the, the this data. So data access is what the Nodo provides. So here is when we can provide a simple access to a several different spread uh, uh, platforms concentrating all the data in a single point and simplifying the access and the usage for the algorithms. Regarding on our projects and, and, and also related to, to an example similar like this one, uh, from a customer that was uh, using initially the node just to join several uh, sources in a single access, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, this project was uh, executing in a normal way and the customer decides uh, because the pandemics to stop it. Uh, after a couple of uh, uh, weeks uh, reshaping the, the, the situation, what they decide to do is, thanks to uh, the virtualization layer, uh, move uh, instead of a single repository, uh, several ones unified by, by the, the, the data access layer, uh, that brings to this company a, a huge uh, amount of savings in, in money because they reduce the instant data capability that they have built in turn on a big data warehouse and then increase via uh, a cloud movement a more reliable uh, maybe not as fast as uh, uh, responsive for the some of the data but as they are working in a, in a different situation and they are working with uh, limited resources they, they were able to deploy uh, a different strategy without impacting their, their, their usage so uh, at the end, this is all related to agility. So the possibility from the data consumption perspective to have the ability to deploy in different physical scenarios in a multi-cloud environment maybe, and to be able to resize according to a, a big changes on the business as, as uh, we receive it in this, uh, in this pandemic. So thank you, Yama. Thank you, the, the, the seven, uh, our seven guests for being here and, uh, and quite complicated times and a quite complicated panel, huh? because there's a lot of people in many different places. So thank you all.